All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look and breaking down the American Blade Works or ABW Model 1. We're going to be taking a look at what is on the inside of probably one of my favorite flippers, if not folders, of the year. And hopefully you guys enjoy taking a look at this really cool blade. And let's learn some of the insights and insides of this knife. And first off, before we get into this, some of the reasons why I want to break this guy down is one, it's nice to have a viewer reference for anyone that might end up owning one of these and wanting to take it apart and wondering how that works. And also too, I think it's pretty cool because this flipper in particular does some things that other flippers don't do. And one of those few things that I think is really worth taking a look at is the very unique stop pin situation. I've mentioned this on other videos, but you'll notice this knife does have a stop pin like a typical folder would have but that stop pin is actually or rather the tang of the blade is milled so that that stop pin rests internally inside the tang of the blade now like i also mentioned in other videos i don't necessarily think that that necessarily makes the knife stronger but i do think that it is a really cool feature and moreover i think it's cool how they made it work with the flipper so that they could put the flipper in more of an ergonomic spot so if you'll notice the flipper is actually pretty much directly in line with the stop pin so that it is nice and high nice and proud it makes it have a really good action but as a consequence to that they mill it out or they mill the flipper tab out partially so that the stop pin will fit inside there so it's really cool and i think that this will be an interesting blade to break down so without any further ado let's jump right into it with some basic Weeha Quartz Bits. So first off, we are going to need probably, I'm guessing, a T10. And uh, let me double check myself on that for this pivot here. And yeah, it looks like a T10 there. So we will need a T10. And on top of that, we will probably need, I'm gonna say maybe a T8 for these screws. Uh, it looks like a T6. So we are going to need probably this guy here. So it looks like it is a loose fit on a T6, but a good fit on a T7. So I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna go with the T7 just because I prefer having a closer fit, especially when it comes to Torx bits, because Torx screw bits love to tear out. So we are going to first off disassemble this blade and uh, yeah. So first off, like I said, um, this is a pretty cool knife and this one in particular is an Ultim handled blade. So it is also, or knife I should say, and uh, Ultim is an interesting material. It's not one of my favorites, um, but it does have a unique coloration and I will say I do think it is kind of cool um, when it comes to Ultim that uh, it is see-through and it's kind of this clear almost honey color or amber color so it does have a unique kind of vintage look i think is what a lot of people like about it um so that is pretty cool another thing that's neat about these abws is the fact that they um have inset liners and the steel liners um, on this blade not to be confused because i think initially there was some thought that this blade had titanium liners on it and some companies such as emerson do in fact use titanium liners but i actually like stainless steel liners because some people may think that that makes the knife cheap and it does technically make it cheaper than titanium but what i do like about um, stainless steel for liners and such over um, choosing titanium is the fact that titanium will gall when it mixes or you know has to lock up against stainless steel whereas stainless steel locking up with stainless steel will not gall or mar the lock surface of the blade and so you are not going to get lock stick and most importantly you're not going to have the hardened steel uh, blade wearing down on your lock bar so it gives you a lot more life and a lot more deployments out of your knife than the alternative all right so now we just gotta screw this last guy off here the pivot and we can pretty much take this thing apart so as you can see, definitely not too complicated. And one thing is, yeah. 
and yeah so there we go this is the um stainless steel lock bar here you guys can see that nothing too fancy nothing too crazy you got your little detent ball there i will say i do like how um the internals of this are machined so you have inset um kind of areas for your caged ball bearing um, action. So that is pretty cool, pretty nice. And I think it's also worth noting that EBW or American Blade Works, they do a lot of their work as far as knives go on CNC machines. So a lot of this is milled on CNC machines. So it is pretty darn cool. As you guys can see here, you got your caged ball bearings. I'm actually gonna take a closer look. It does look like it is just ceramic ball bearings uh, on this guy. So this is not a, like on Skiff, um, they use phosphorus bronze washers that are thicker and have, you know, ceramic ball bearings. This looks just like um, it is just ceramic ball bearings. And truth be told, you know, some people might gripe about that, but I don't really think that there's an actual problem with that in particular. However, I do think now that we are at this point, we can take a look at um, we can take a look at how this blade works. So like I was saying earlier, I'm gonna try to lift this up for you guys. It, like I said, with this um, system, this does have a stop pin, but that stop pin is actually inset into the tang of the blade. And like I was saying earlier, I don't necessarily think that this necessarily makes the blade, you know, stronger because the stop pin is milled into it. I think this is more for stylistic points slash ergonomics, but you can see there how it indexes. And I think that this is um, certainly really unique. I've never seen this done on another um, knife from like another company. So I think it is really cool to see. It's definitely very unique to kind of see that uh, pattern there. And then also to see how small the um, lock face is. Normally the lock face, you know, is milled this entire, um, you know, kind of section here. And so it's just a very unique looking um, system. So that's, that's part of the reason why I wanted to tear this guy down, kind of show you it. It's also cool to see, you know, like I said, what knives look like on the inside. And as I'm sure if you guys have seen any of my other teardown videos, it's just nice to see what's on the inside of a blade because honestly, a lot of times companies are hiding things, you know, whether that's, um, you know, Teflon washers or, you know, different uh, fun little things, you know, they are hiding on the inside. So anyways, that is the inside of this guy. Um, the inside of the you know show side liner nothing too fancy or special they are pretty pretty basic so that is been a look at the inside of this guy now we are going to throw it all back together and because I dug into this guy I will use a little bit of KPL to help um, kind of give it some some added life now this one luckily for me isn't too dirty so it's pretty much gonna go together the way it uh, was broken down so yeah overall this thing is pretty cool to see broken down i'm definitely glad i took it apart just because i wanted to see like i said what that blade tang looked like um, it looked very unique to me and like i said having never seen something like that quite like that i thought it was worth um, breaking down and taking a look at so let's see if i can get this guy properly lined up here so I think another neat feature that is worth noting on these ABWs that I think, if nothing else, makes reassembly really easy is you'll notice on the back side of this pivot collar here, you'll notice how this side is machined flat and that helps lock this pin in so that when you go to screw the knife back together, the pivot collar, I guess you could say, or the bolt that surrounds the actual screw isn't just freely spinning in there. So it definitely, in my opinion, I think helps out. So cool thing to see. It's a little, it's a lot of those little things that like, honestly, you know, when people ask, you know, why are knives so expensive? It's a lot of these little design cues that make it, you know, make a inexpensive knife expensive. So I think it's worth noting um, and kind of cool to point out. All right. And for those wondering, this is the detent divot right there where the detent is like locked in or where the D10 locks in. It's a lot higher on the blade than I was actually expecting, but still pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so just throw a generous amount of lubrication on there. Then comes the more tricky part. 
So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to pre-assemble this portion here. And I probably should have actually done this ahead of time if I was thinking, but I rarely do. So I'm actually going to drop out all of this stuff here. All right, so picking up where we left off, I just used these screws to screw in the backspacer. I think it's easier to do that at this point than it is to try to do it later on down the road. So we will throw this guy together. I'm actually going to drop that out. So yeah, I have to say overall, the machine work on these ABWs is pretty darn impressive. And I think what's most impressive is that you get all of this you know, machine work and such for a very reasonable price. These ABWs, I should know when you can find them because they're not always the most available knives. Um, but when you can find them, they are almost always very, very reasonably priced. I think that that is a huge selling factor, at least in my opinion. Um, for these knives. They are really, really like well, well made, well tuned, um, and in my opinion, you know, pretty well built knives. So the assembly process or reassembly is probably not going to be the easiest on this side in particular, but we are going to give it a shot. So I think for me here, just to help with uh, compression, I'm going to just put in, oh yeah, help to put in the other pivot as I have failed to do here. <laughs> this knife would not run as smoothly without that. So what I'm gonna do is just slap this all on here as one kind of unit. Kick this guy here. And then what I usually do when I reassemble knives is typically I will try to get that pivot on. So this guy is acting so darn difficult to get out of here. It's very well magnetized, I can tell you that. So yeah, usually I'll just try to get the pivot on when I'm reassembling a knife and when I'm trying to just get that pivot on there, like it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, like rock solid or tight, but you, know, you just want to functionally get that on there so that the knife is, you know, like that spring tension that the knife is under with the lock bar interface is kind of just captive. So that is my goal. And once you get that down, you're basically just good to go. Um, this one, it looks like there's a little bit of figuring these backs, backspacer screws out, but that's not too difficult. And of course, we don't want to forget the pocket clip. And it's also worth noting that the pocket clip obviously does have longer screws to reach into that threaded area in the backspacer. So it's important to note which screws are which, but luckily, like with this knife, something I do like, I'm not a huge fan of the smaller torques, like a lot of the knife tubers have talked about and like with my own personal experiences, you know, a lot of your smaller Torx bits, um, like your T6s, your T7s tend to just strip out a lot more. They have a lot less material in there. But what I do like about this ABW is the fact that it does <clears throat> um, take advantage of really only having, you know, like three <clears throat> body screws per side. So, and two of those body screws are, you know, um, your clip screws. So I really like the fact that this knife takes advantage of not going overboard with the body screws. I feel like that's probably one of the biggest sins of Benchmade is that they love their body screws and there's really not a good reason to love body screws, to be honest. So the last thing I do here, and unfortunately it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but the last thing I will do with these knives is typically you just take it and you start to tighten your pivot and then you just look down the center. You know, you want to make sure that your blade is centered because for the best and smoothest action, you're going to want to have that blade nice and centered. So there we go. Back to functional and still just as a drop shut as before, if not a little bit more. This didn't have a whole lot of oil on it, so threw a little bit more in there than maybe necessary, but it is back to functional. So yeah, that has been a look at the American Blade Works or ABW Model 1. Like I said, I think it's a pretty cool knife to take a deeper look at. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the disassembly video. As always, God bless and I'm out.